Welcome to the Rotowire Prospect Podcast. I'm Clay Link here with Rotowire.com's lead prospect analyst, James Anderson. James, we are here on Alec Manoa Day. It's great to be chatting with you. Also going to be taking some time on the show to, to preview and look ahead to your next set of dynasty ranks, kind of just where the major leaguers are slotting in at the moment. And uh, kind of pick those apart. And, yeah, they are in rough draft form right now, but uh, kind of preview those and talk through some things. How are you today, man? I'm good. Uh, it is Just, Alec Manoa Day. I, I, What do you want him to do tonight? Because, obviously, we, we have to look at this in terms of uh, a potential Fabapalooza coming on Sunday. Mm -hmm. Like, do we want him to just pitch well enough to, to – be assured of a spot in the rotation, but not so well that it's going to require like a $400 bid to add him. I want him to tear it up. James. Okay. I really do. That's cool. <laughs> because That's cool I did too. get him, I get, did get him active in one league. I didn't think I was going to be able to, um, I didn't in you state league. You should have started, should have just started him there. I know you kind of tried to talk me into it last weekend on the XM show. And I just didn't have the stones, but uh, I did end up swapping him into the Tout Wars lineup against Ariel Cohen, who will be joining us on this Friday's XM show, by the way. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, tough competitor, and it's going to be a, a tough week for me. But I did slot him in there because I realized, and this is, you know, hey, I, I'm kind of ex, uh, manipulating the rules a little bit, but I had plugged in Michael Pineda. But Pineda was still on the IL, so I could swap him out. And so I did. Well, you swapped, I wanted, out a, you swapped out a pretty good start from him today. Yeah, I know. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Pineda could have a better outing for sure. And uh, I just didn't want to miss out, you know. Didn't want to be completely missing out on this. Because I think he could go out there and just – I don't know. I think in Yankee Stadium against a Yankees team that's depleted, he could go out and have a pretty good outing. Yeah, so. I, I mean, I think it's – it's sneakily not like this gauntlet of a matchup for him. I mean, it's, it's kind of uh, a testament to what they think of him, that they're up for having him debut against the Yankees, but uh, especially for a right-handed pitcher, it's not, it's not really a gauntlet lineup. So um, my hopes are high. I, I think, you know, the only outcome that would suck is if he wasn't very good, but, any other outcome, I could talk myself into it being being the right thing. And I and I've got him going in our auto new league. Uh, oh, you got him. Get him in in the rest of my uh, weekly lineup leagues. But I'm expecting big things from him. I know, you know, the jump in competition looks great on paper, but we just had no way to to gauge his progress over the last year or so. So I'm thinking he could be. Uh, could be a stud. He looked great in spring training, and he hasn't slowed down. So I'm thinking he, especially given the other options there, he should be here to stay. And your top pitching prospect in, in all the majors. So, again, we're talking about later in the show about your uh, upcoming set of dynasty rankings updated. And we're talking mostly about guys who are already in the bigs, but where do you think a guy like Manoa should slot in here? Uh, Obviously, in Dynasty, you got to devalue him a little bit, but you think in Manoa's like a top 150 Dynasty asset, top 200? Yeah, de definitely top 150. Um, the My whole sort of process for doing these is I'm doing the big leaguers first in the top 400 Dynasty rankings because there's just a larger sample there. We, we kind of have... Uh, a better idea about what breakouts are legitimate and, and that kind of thing on the MLB side than on the MILB side. So I'm putting those together first. And then once those are done, basically later this afternoon, then I'll finish the prospect rankings update and then I'll slot in the top, I don't know, 100, 125 guys from the prospect rankings over to the actual dynasty ranks. So I'll be kind of ranking the big leaguers separate, the minor leaguers separate, and then sort of combining the list. So I, I, you know, it's, it's probably, you know, Manoa, I would, I would think he would be 
a borderline top 20 prospect for me. I, I think he's probably around like 25th right now. And, you know, you're probably going to get the top 25 to 30 prospects inside the top 150 on the dynasty ranking. So uh, if I had to guess, I would say Manoa will be maybe just outside the top 100 of the overall dynasty rankings. Awesome, man. We look forward to that. Of course, you're doing both. It's a big undertaking, and we all appreciate it. And this is going to be, I think, helpful, too, for those taking part in those second chance Memorial Day leagues, just kind of re-ranking the, the big league hitters right now and, and big league players and uh, seeing how things have changed. So we'll be talking about that. This podcast is sponsored by WinBet. I forgot to mention that at the very top of the show, but we appreciate their sponsorship. Also, uh, James, I'm just now realizing I don't have a walk-up song at the ready so i'm gonna have to like scramble as we're doing this it won't be too hard to come up with one we will be drafting uh walk-up songs at the end of the show i'm pretty happy with the playlist we've put together anything else you want to mention about manoa before we uh move on no i'm just um i'm glad that so many of our listeners were able to get in on him uh well you could still get in and I uh, just just hope that hoping for the best tonight. Um, hopefully, we hopefully everyone's just freaking out about him on Twitter all night and just showing gif after gif after gif, and uh, we can all just overreact like crazy to a great start tonight. Yeah, I love our guy Vlad Sedler, but I saw him saying he'd rather have Logan Gilbert the rest of the way this season. I mean, Logan Gilbert's been a pretty big disappointment so far. Look, I was stashing him too. <laughs> Stashing, you know, stashing, there's a, a thin line between genius and madness when it comes to stashing season. And so, you know, I'm stashing Bobby Witt, too, <laughs> um, Stake League. So the Manoa stash, you know, there's, there's good and bad with the stashes. Um, and I just think, you know, a guy like Logan Gilbert, it doesn't look great. He did have a little bit of a step forward yesterday but i think manoa is going to really pay off and i think we're going to open the wall at big time in in the main event no matter what pretty much no matter what the uh, result <laughs> is today. yeah uh i mean i i gilbert's got a better home park obviously and it's there's a pretty big gap i would say between the the home parks between those two but and probably the opponents that. the opponents yeah, i mean sure. the, the angels yeah. are pretty brutal yeah yeah um but yeah i'm sorry to cut you i off. mean i i other i don't i mean like sure yeah I, I guess you could give the edge to the uh opposition as well but i mean it's it's not that close to me like like they're not going to be like right next to each other on my prospect rankings or anything so if we're just talking about pitching talent it's clearly manila for me but there are some other factors that point in gilbert's favor so let me just take a look at Manoa's upcoming schedule here because obviously this is kind of a tough way to debut, but as we said, this is not the the uh, juggernaut Yankees team that we were used to seeing because um, they now head to back to Toronto, right? So it's going to be at New York and then in Toronto against – or in Buffalo, rather, against uh, Miami. So well, really nice. Vince Velasquez kept the Marlins off the board last night, much to my displeasure uh, with Sandy on the mound. So uh, I would have to imagine Manoa should be able to handle that that lineup. <laughs> yeah, I mean, nothing can really play more favorably than uh, TD Ballpark did. So uh, I know last year the park in Buffalo was pretty hitter friendly, but. Uh, we'll see. I think, yeah, that versus Miami is not too daunting either. Then he's got to face the White Sox, which is kind of tough. But I do – I mean, I think this guy's ready to just be let off the chain and eat. Like, I think he's just – I mean, it sounds corny and well, lame, but yeah. like a, bull, a bulldog mentality where if when you watch him, he's just – he's getting after it, man. Like two, two guys – two guys that I, like, really liked their skills coming into the year – and just sort of stayed away because of those division and ballpark factors or John Means and Hyunjin Ryu, and they've both been yeah. awesome. So I, I think we can maybe overthink things a little bit. Like if 
like we should be looking at the talent first and then the other factors second in, in these cases. Absolutely. I mentioned those second chance leagues. Are you doing any of those? I'm not, but, uh, no. kind of the I, talk. I can, I can barely handle my current leagues. So <laughs> yeah. Plus that. I'm trying to win those. Yeah. Yeah. I, it'd be one, if, if I was just having a disaster season, I might yeah. do it, but I, I gotta, gotta protect some squads. Yeah. I, uh, that's my main focus. My, my Sundays are shot enough. Like, and my my entire Sunday is fab. And thinking about fab, it's it's bad. I also love it, and uh, you get that immediate payoff when when nine o'clock central hits in the NFBC. It's a great great feeling. Um, let's get into your well, get into previewing your dynasty ranking update coming soon to to rotowire.com. First, let's go to a word from our sponsors. And I'll splice those into the audio file. James, looking at your dynasty ranks, previewing them. This is a rough draft, the ones we're looking at now, but I thought we'd go through, talk about some things. Ronald Acuna Jr., no surprise at number one. And Fernando Tatis Jr., number two, another one that's really no surprise. But I think the health of the shoulder, we're still kind of fresh after that, and it's still kind of fresh on our minds. But – I think this that's a justified ranking even with those concerns because he's producing even even while playing through it. And I imagine yeah. they, they get this corrected surgically probably in an off season, probably this coming one. I mean if if Tatis had been healthy all season, I mean I, I think his numbers would look even better than Acuna's, perhaps. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean a, a Acuna was an easy call at number one, but, um, you know, it, with these, it's always, I mean, these are so tough to do, uh, cause we're all just sort of prisoners of the moment and everything like that. But it's, you know, when in doubt, you should kind of try to take as, as big of a step back as you can. And I mean, Tatis is, is just an amazing building block in dynasty. And then Juan Soto, a little bit of a slower start for him, but I mean, a small sample and as and rock solid as they come. These are for OBP leagues too, I should That's, say. These are, yeah. I mean, it they can be used in any format and we'll have the up down arrows for the batting average and OBP and everything like that. And uh, they're for 15 team leagues where each team starts two catchers, but uh, just worth noting, uh, especially with like Soto and Trout and, Bellinger and guys like that, that it is OBP, not batting average. And even with that in mind, Vladdy Jr. checking in at four. It's been an unreal start, and I really don't want to hear about how everybody do it because nobody wanted to draft him. <laughs> I don't I don't mean nobody, but he's still, you know, I look back at some of the auction prices, and it was, it was totally affordable, and um, he's kind of becoming the guy we all thought he would be. Uh, but not everybody thought it'd be right away this year. So I think, you know, it's, I think this is the first year of a year or of a chunk of time that we'll look back at and look at the baseball reference page and just see a, a big old hall of fame resume with this kind of being the first real year of that, that resume. Yeah. I, I mean, I kind of thought his, statistical production was going to mirror Albert Pujols's um, back when he was a prospect. And I, I thought he would hit the ground running and just kind of get on that trajectory right away as a rookie. And it didn't, didn't happen right away. And, you know, that's it's part of the game, but uh, yeah, I mean, this is pretty crazy. I, I was looking at our earned auction calculator on the site and I, for just five by five roto leagues with OBP, he is the far and away most valuable player to date. Uh, if you're in an OBP league this year, yeah, he's amazing, man, and just an absolute stud. Still remember you brought it up last week on Farm Friday that like Dominican backfield home run derby showing or just BP, I guess, when he was fourteen, fifteen. <laughs> Just an unreal, unreal talent. And, yeah, he didn't hit the ground running, but 
Same with Mike Trout, who's, who's fifth right behind you. And same with Jared Kelnick. He's not hitting the ground running either. So Major League Baseball is just incredibly difficult on both sides of the ball. So Would you, uh, would you have Vlad over Soto? I don't think so. I think that's I think that's right. Okay. Because it, it's easy to say now, right now, maybe you would, but I mean, Soto's the guy's just unreal, and we've seen him do what Vlad's doing right now, essentially. You know. But anyway, uh, Trey Turner right behind Trout. Then I still I agree that Trout OBP still deserves to be there. Uh, Turner. It's kind of like just boring, but he just does it all. And, uh, it shouldn't be boring, but at this point, his consistency just kind of makes him boring. Uh, we don't really talk about him because he's just kind of flat, which is, is great. And Mookie Betts is kind of a little down right now, but he's still awesome. I, I still think uh, he deserves it. My first real gripe here is Cody Bellinger, James. He is coming back. I saw he homered again on the rehab assignment. I just don't know if I have him in this elite grouping. I had a guy like Bichette, uh, Otani, J-Ram. I don't know if I could do it. You still think Bellinger deserves to be in that group? Oh, yeah. I mean, I I didn't really have any reservations putting him there. I mean, this is OBP. If it was batting average, I'd probably have Bichette ahead of Bellinger. But um, – yeah, you know, he's he's what <laughs> two years younger than mm-hmm. two years younger than Otani, like three years younger than J Ram. Um, obviously, this is a low point. This is a low point in his value, but I mean, he's he's a twenty five year old with a career three sixty four OBP. Uh, always going to be playing in one of the best lineups in the game. And um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't really have any trouble putting him there. I hear you. I do like the player. I just, I guess maybe because I watch MLB TV and I always see him see that highlight of him walking off the uh, a game in the NLCS and then hurting his shoulder. <laughs> I just worry about him doing stupid stuff. Sometimes, but I mean, and the injuries piling up, but the shoulder, I hope he can come back from our own Jeff Stotts had some, some sage advice really, because this was back even before he got hurt again, but he just was worried about him coming back. And um, I kind of wonder if maybe it'll take him a while to really hit his stride coming back. I know it's the lower leg now, but I still worry about the shoulder too. Uh, with Bellinger, but uh, moving on here and you're previewing your dynasty ranks. I uh, mentioned Bichette, J Ram, Bryce Harper, Harper now heard. And thanks Joe Girardi. You know, that was so cool of you. Uh, such a competitive advantage to uh, lie. <laughs> uh, Shohei Otani. I, dude, Otani, it's so crazy how things work. <laughs> I, uh, I only have the one share with you in, in the main events. And it's so funny that we, when we drafted him, we're like, oh, if we just think of him as our SP3 and don't even think about him up and down between Util and Pitcher. And then we ended up having to start in week one at Util. He hasn't budged since, and he's been our best hitter by a mile. So, I mean, I know he's like the runaway favorite for MVP right now and in the books, and I think he should be. He's – He's unreal, and I think if this was a daily league, daily lineup moves, he could make a case he should be number one. Yeah, I mean, he's still a really hard guy for me to rank because he actually, you know, I, I'm i not sure what type of true talent OBP he's going to have because you could, uh, on the one hand, is like K rate, walk rate aren't great. You know, they're, they're just not, especially given his age. On the other hand, I think he's just kind of missed so many reps uh, with injuries, you know, in terms of reps at the plate and working as a two-way player that you could argue that he'll improve his plate discipline metrics, you know, as the season goes on. Uh, You know, what you can't really deny is that his 
he's got 80 grade game power and he gets to it with such ease. Uh, some of the, some of the balls he hits out, he's just got no business hitting out. And, uh, he's also got those wheels and he likes putting those to use. I mean, he, he's been hurt a lot, but he doesn't play like a player who's worried about getting hurt again. Like he's, he kind of is always just playing a hundred percent effort out there. And, uh, I, I mean, if he was not a pitcher, I would have him ranked even higher. I just, I think that sort of adds an element of risk that he could maybe hurt himself pitching in a way that complicates things for him as a position player. But I mean, it's still, it, he's a really tough guy for me to rank. Like I could, I could see a case for having him in the top 10. I could see a case for having him outside the top 20. Um, just and his his dynasty value over the past like three years has just been all over the map. So, uh, pretty vol- pretty volatile player as well. Now, here's where things start to get real, real interesting. I'd say because you got Ozzy Albies right behind Otani, Xander Bogarts, who's just the ultimate just rock for your team. Corey Seager, Christian Yelich, Rafael Devers. Is this pretty fluid for you here? Because I mean, I could, especially if you're trying to win now, maybe you bump Cole up. I know you got Cole down here at 22. Um, I know with, when you do these, you, you like to put a focus on on hitting, but did you did you think about bumping Cole up for those win now players? Yeah. I mean, I think for for like 20% of the – managers in every dynasty league cole is a top 10 player so like the teams the teams that can win the league this year like not just kind of can get into the money but the teams that are legitimate contenders to win the league cole is a top 10 guy but then any team that can't win the league this year cole's barely like a top 25 guy so it's just kind of threading that needle of I mean, that's, that's what, that's why these, like the dynasty rankings are so much harder for me to do than the prospect rankings because everyone understands like a prospect's a prospect, right? Like, you know, you can factor in like ETA and stuff like that, but uh, there's just so many different um, motivations depending on how good your dynasty roster is that a guy like Garrett Cole, like Garrett Cole's right next to Eloy Jimenez. Obviously, if you're rebuilding, I think you'd rather have Jimenez. If you're contending, you would much, much rather have Garrett Cole. Um, So that's just, it's really tough. I tend to err on the side of kind of like, you know, what would a middle of the pack team kind of do? I mean, that's, that's hard to do as well, but I mean, it's just, it's such a hard process because just pitcher, like you shouldn't be building around pitchers if you're, two or three years away from winning your league. Like you should be, if you have Garrett Cole right now and you're not contending, you should be trying to trade him. And um, you could probably get more for him than some of the hitters I have ranked ahead of him, especially if it's a really tight battle in your league and and he could just be the deciding piece. But, um, you know, the hitters I have ahead of him, uh, for the most part, maybe with the exception of like Christian Yelich and Aaron Judge, uh, the hitters I have ahead of him are going to absolutely hold their value for longer than Garrett Cole will hold his value. Like, I, I just, I don't think that that's all that debatable. So um, it's really hard. It's really hard in this range. Um, you know, I, I could, and yes, to your, to your question, it is, it is extremely fluid there from, it's even fluid, like the Otani parts fluid to me too like mm. basically from like 12 to 22 it's extremely fluid yeah i have some important breaking news by the way apparently josh fuentes uh he was slumping in april so he cut his hair and changed his name he's now joshua fuentes so i was typing there for a minute and i uh, was responding to a question as to whether we need to change his name in the database I said, yeah, probably. I don't imagine Joshua Fuentes made your, made your list here, but we'll continue making our way down. Sorry to inter- interrupt there, James. But uh, 
behind Garrett Cole, you mentioned, you know, Luis Robert, Eloy. I mean, and then you get to Bieber. Bieber has been not quite himself so far this year, but I still think he's probably in that echelon. Um, I got to say, I'm a little surprised you don't have Corbin Burns over Bieber, but I think maybe that's probably the measured, the measured more reasonable take right now. And Burns has come back to earth a little bit, right? I only have him in one league, I think, but um, you still like Bieber over Burns long-term? Uh, I mean, I think Burns maybe has a higher ceiling. Uh, I don't think no, I don't he think really should, I, don't, I don't think we should expect – like, it shouldn't just be a given assumption that Burns is going to ever have a better year than Shane Bieber's best year. Um, I mean, it, there's, there's a lot to be said for – proving that you can handle a starter's workload. Uh, Burns, this is going to be his first real shot to do that. And by the next mm-hmm. time I update these, um, I mean, if he's still kind of cruising and, and hasn't hasn't missed time with injuries, then I could see Burns being the number two pitcher on the list for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, he could even – like we could be – I could be doing these rankings – in the off season and like Burns could be the number one pitcher for dynasty leagues. But I just think we, you know, I, I want to see him hold up and, you know, he hasn't really had the opportunity to show that just yet. Yeah, man. That's a good point. I mean, Bieber has cleared 200 before it's 77 and a third last year. He's already got 65. The whip with him is just abnormally high right now. One, two, six for Bieber. Um, this hasn't quite looked great, but I think, you know, there is, that is such an underrated skill being able to do it again and again and take the ball every fifth day throughout an entire year. It's tough. We, we have not seen it yet. Uh, Trent Grisham hurt right now, but in this mix, Jacob DeGrom down here, um, the injuries, you know, it's, it hasn't really been anything bad but just what a little thing here or there over the years his age is starting to creep up and then uh woodruff giolito definitely encouraged with how giolito has been looking his past few outings uh, then kyle tucker pretty interesting um kyle tucker was off to a pretty brutal start this year but you haven't lost much faith it seems i mean i've always kind of been lower on kyle tucker so i I just I don't think I think he's kind of exactly what I thought he was basically, and just his age and. Uh, you thought ability. he was like a two thirty five guy. I mean, he's oh, been pretty I, pretty rocky. I mean, I, so I obviously I don't have him anywhere. Um, <laughs> yeah, but like I don't like, think. You know, I just I think he was getting overdrafted this year, but he he's going to provide power. He's going to provide speed. He's, he's really young. Um, he's going to be hitting in a very high spot in that order for the next four or five years. So, uh, not, not a perfect player by any stretch, but you know, it, that that's, that's what you want to build around is, is hitters that are Tucker's age. I think I would take Randy or Rosarena over him and maybe that's a recency bias, but that recency it's starting to build, you know. I mean, he's hot right now in that hot stretch in the postseason, obviously. But I think – I don't know. Kyle Tucker is stealing bags and, and hitting some homers. He's got 10 homers and four bags with 235, 304, 465. I almost think Randy Rosarena may be a better player than him. Yeah. I mean, I would take a Rosarena rest of season. Uh What's I mean I think there's probably like a three year age gap between those two. That's a good question. Uh, um, Tucker's twenty four. Randy's probably what twenty five. No, he's older than that. Oh right. <laughs> uh, he's twenty six. So two Randy. two years. Um, yeah, two. yeah. I mean, I, that's that's definitely part of it. If they were. If they were the same age, I'd probably have Verazarena ahead as well. Um, you know, you just – again, this is the challenge here of, of doing these 
at any point in the calendar, but especially less than two months into the season, like two weeks for either of these guys that are good or bad is going to shift the way you look at them. But, you know, I think that that, the fact that Tucker is 24, you're getting his entire prime. You're only going to get part of Areza Reina's prime. Um, you know, I think that's that's part of it. The guy who's 24, like Tucker, Glaber Torres, tough start for him, but you still have him pretty high here. Uh, I know these are a rough draft. And we're this is a big – uh, OB, OBP really helps Glaber out. Yeah, that's uh, true. If it, if it was – not OBP. Like, and it OBP really helps Glaber, and it really hurts Tim Anderson, who's right behind him. Um, you know, I, Tim Anderson would maybe be 15 spots higher if we're just talking a batting average league, but uh, he just doesn't really walk. And Gla- Glaber maybe walks too much, and Tim Anderson doesn't walk enough. I'm liking the Glaber's finally getting it going a little bit, but it's been pretty tough so far. Need to get him a good long stretch against the O's, you know. Got to get him against the Orioles. Uh, Aaron Nola, Jack Flaherty, Trevor Story. We don't know what his future holds, but it's probably not in Colorado. Uh, Nolan Arenado has been great outside Colorado. Pete Alonzo hurt right now. But I think that's about right for him. Austin Meadows struggling a little bit with the batting average, but still a, a nice player. Jordan Alvarez, my boy Nick Castellanos, love to see that. Uh, Sandy Alcantara, he's had a little bit of uh, bad luck in terms of run support. Uh, Frankie Lindor, I think most people probably lower on him than 47. But this guy has got to figure it out, James. I mean, Frankie's – Frankie's been like a all world type of player before. He's he's not this bad. I mean, one eighty five, two ninety four. I think he's he's obviously pushing a little bit and pressing. And uh, there'll be a lot brighter days ahead. It's I think if you're doing a draft, he probably slips quite a bit further than forty seven. But uh, I think that's probably where he belongs. I'm, yeah, I'm kind of hedging with that ranking, right? Like, I mean, obviously he's not this bad, but I think I think I would probably be in the median here. I think you'd find people that would say that we're overreacting by even having him outside the top, like, 35. But, uh, you know, I just – I don't know what his – the level – like, even if he bounces back, like, I don't think he's ever – going to be like a top 20 pick again so it's more just about i i just trust him to provide really steady production uh for the next five six years even though it, it might not be superstar production yeah and then uh gavin lux well byron bucks and gavin lux austin riley riley's just been out of his mind lately man i I gotta say the swings for him have been pretty dramatic, but you were do you have Austin Riley? Is he kind of this year's Sandy for you? Do you have hundred <laughs> percent Austin Riley exposure? Um is it damn near hundred percent? I wish it was hundred percent. Uh pulling that up right now. Um I think I, have, I just know you I were have, beating the drum for him. Yeah, I have fifty four point five percent. Austin Riley exposure and NFBC. Um, and then uh, the top, my top three for NFBC exposure are Yusei Kikuchi, Sandy, and Avisel Garcia. <laughs> <laughs> well, it can't all be gems, but I mean, Riley's been great. I know the BABIP's been really high and the K's are still higher than you'd like, but. Uh, He's showing what he's capable of doing. And I love that quote from Ronald Acuna where he said, like, this guy's just scratching the surface or whatever he said. But, uh, I mean, definitely an exciting time if you have him in Dynasty. I just – I love these guys in Dynasty where they're, like, 23, 24, and they've firmly established that they're going to be everyday players. You know, it like, Austin Riley is probably never going to be even, like, a second-round pick, even in his – even in his absolute prime, 
but like he's going to be a top 100 pick, I think, for the next seven years. Uh, so like that, that type of staying power that that gives you just such a big window to compete in in dynasty. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh, riding high right now. I I think a lot of people would maybe suggest selling high on Austin Riley, but I think your rank here suggests you know probably going to be an anchor for your team. Having him as a top fifty dynasty asset, right at fifty. Uh, well, he'll be lower a strong once, once I have the prospects. Well, once yeah, I have the prospects will okay. be lower. A but, little bit yeah. lower, yeah. I don't know how many prospects do you think are inside the top fifty, though. Maybe like ten, a handful. Yeah, yeah. I would say, okay. I would say five, like five to ten. Yeah. Okay. So right behind Austin Riley, Ramon Laureano. I wish, uh, I kind of wish his stolen base clip had remained what it was <laughs> earlier in the year. He just kind of slowed down, but I, I'm glad happy with what he's done. I'm glad it didn't because I, I was just hating myself there for a couple of weeks for not having more Laureata. So I'm I'm glad that he's only going to steal like 25 bases instead of 40, which would have sucked. <laughs> yeah. He still only got eight. I mean, eight sounds great, but he had eight like a month ago. <laughs> he actually, yeah, he has not stolen a base. Ramon Laureano has not stolen a base in his last 37 games. So he stole eight through April 13th. Come on, Ramon. Laser Ramon. That's one of the great nicknames in baseball, Laser Ramon. Uh, that, I hope he's not a little dinged up with his lower half or something because that is a little strange to, to, to run wild like that and then just stop abruptly. Was, it, was he just going against some terrible throwing catchers or something in those first three Possible. series? He also has had a thumb injury, which they said was minor earlier in May. So maybe didn't want to like aggravate that or something. He also had a wrist issue, but yeah, that's so weird that he just stole eight, then just stopped suddenly. Uh, but I still think he's a 20 steal guy pretty easily by the end of the year, maybe 30. Um, he's been caught twice in his last 37 games. But no successful steals for Ramon Laureano. Jazz, though, oh, God. I, I tweeted that I wanted, like, a live, like, CNN, like, live footage of him, like, touching down, coming back from <laughs> rehab assignment. Because this guy is a superstar, and we got to hype up the – we got to hype up our big league superstars more. So I think I think he's a superstar, Jazz Chisel. Yeah, I mean, it's – he's had a pretty rough – run since uh coming back from injury has still been i mean he's already got more steals than lariano at nine um in just 30 games so that that's awesome uh i mean i could if someone wanted to tell me like jazz should be 20 spots higher fine 20 spots lower fine um he's just there's so much fluidity with his ranking right now like when i do these i'm gonna shoot to have these done uh, the next update, like just before the trade deadline, and like he could be, he could be top twenty by then. He could be outside the top seventy-five. It's just it's tough to say with him because that he did have that strikeout rate well under thirty. Now it's up to thirty-five. The walk rates kind of been cut in half. So um, I I feel like he might be trying to like make up for last time or something. But um, yeah, I mean I think. I think when when the dust settles, he's going to be a, a total stud. Maybe I'm buying a little too much into the cool factor here because he does have a 35% K rate. Maybe he's not a superstar player, but the, the tools are exciting, and he has, still has time to, to refine those plate skills, only 23 years old. Uh, but, yeah, maybe, maybe not a superstar player, but I, I want him to be a superstar because he could be great for that. Miami uh, club. Chris Bryant, right behind him. He's had a big resurgent year. Andrew Vaughn, love that he finally uh, opened. He pried Tony LaRusse's eyes open. Like in uh, like the, Clockwork Orange. Oh, I, I thought you were going to reference when the Arizona State Patrol had to pry his eyes open in the <laughs> middle of that oh, intersection. No. Oh, man. <laughs> I was thinking... Of uh, you've never seen. Have you seen a clockwork yeah. orange? Yeah. Oh, yeah. They, yeah. they make them watch those horrible things. Yeah. Um, 
that's what essentially had to happen for him to realize how good this guy was. But I do think he's probably solidified himself now. And uh, he's been he's been really heating up, Andrew Vaughn. Yon Mankata has been a little disappointing so far. Conforto hurt. Uh, Matt Olson next on the list. Dylan Carlson's been really good, especially for OBP. Is that a big part of having him here? Well, he, I think he's hitting for a pretty high average, too. Yeah, he uh, is. I think he's getting he's on not, base like 380 clip or something. Yeah, I mean, if he was doing Three, more in terms of – If he was doing more in terms of power and speed, he'd be higher. Uh, yeah, no stolen bases. Right. Yeah, so it's – yeah, I, I think Carlson was sort of always ranked high for me as a prospect, more for the floor than the ceiling. So, you know, I, I was certainly hoping he'd have more than zero steals at this point in the year. Um, but, yeah, we'll we'll see. I mean, it, I'm, I'm mostly kind of hoping that the, the homers start to pile up here because I don't, I don't want him to finish the year with, like, a high batting average, high OBP, and, like, 16 homers and four steals. Uh, that'd be kind of disappointing, but um, really nice. I mean, at, at the plate, he's he's been kind of everything we hoped he'd be, if not more. Yeah, that guy's only 22 years old. Um, and the, the steals are definitely in question because he only has one in his career in the big leagues in 81 games still in Carlson. Sprint speed isn't great. Uh, 73rd percentile, according to Baseball Savant. Again, he's 22 years old, but I do wonder if maybe that's not going to be a big part of his game. And that pace you were mentioning, 16 and 4, that'd actually be, you say it's disappointing, but given the pace he's on right now, um, you may be lucky to end up with that, frankly. Um, obviously, if he's going to end up hitting 285. Uh, that'd be great, but. 16 and four, maybe a, a long shot at this point for Dylan Carlson. Uh, let's move on, though, James. Clayton Kershaw, Will Smith, Anthony Rendon, Julio Urias has been fantastic. Uh, Ian Anderson, Pablo Lopez, JT Realmuto, uh, Max Muncy, uh, OBP, that seems about right. Joey Gallo gets that big OBP bump as well. Well, uh, Max Muncy's fourth on the player radar right now in OBP leagues because really? he's got really? a 459 OBP. Jeez, I didn't I know he was kind of <laughs> heating up but, and it was hitting some bombs but good grief, man. Yeah. I guess I got to take that L, you know. He famously was not written up for uh, I say famously but just in my own head because I you know, kicked myself for it, but we didn't write him up for that one for the magazine that year before he exploded with the uh the Dodgers, because he'd been, I think, released from AAA Nashville or DFA or something. And the same kind of boat with uh, Adelis Garcia. But I think Max Muncy, I mean, he's obviously done it for numerous years now, and just those plate skills are, are rock solid. So kind of amazing that the A's missed on that, this guy. Oh, by the way, I wanted to see where Adelis was on your, on your rankings. 116. So what do you, yeah. what do you think? Too, too I think too that's – I was going to say a little too high maybe, but looking at some of the guys below him, well, you still have to add in the prospects too. So um, I think maybe when you do that, he'll be about where he, he should be. Mm -hmm. um, hard guy for me to buy into, but maybe I just have that Max Muncy block where I just – there's so many teams See, passed on him and I just have it where he can't be this good. I thought you were more high on him than I was, so that's that's interesting. Well, I did say that I'd take him over uh, Nick Senzo on, <laughs> on the <this> show. Wow. <laughs> but at going the time, I thought that was kind of going on a limb. Because I had paid up big for him in the Series XM Dynasty League. Adam Lee had paid like four fourteen out of 1,000. And I'd said that was a 15 team, but if I had Nick Senzo in like a 12 and Adam Lee was still out there. I know it doesn't look so bold now, James, but a month ago that was kind of bold. Nick Senzel down at 285. I I don't know if I'd even have him top 300, but uh, 
obviously he's hurt now, so easy for me to say. But he just – I don't know if it's ever going to click for Nick Senzo. Well, there's a long, a long history of it not clicking and not really any history of it clicking. So That's so true. Uh, Luis Severino is kind of high up at 103. Just don't know. And Syndergaard, did you hear about him? Did they say that yeah, was – Yeah, I, uh, I had Syndergaard about 20 spots higher than this, and I, I'm i not sure exactly what to do with him right now because he oh, yeah. obviously – very disappointing news with his rehab start and kind of, I know we're not having Jeff Stotts on this week, but that'd be the first thing I'd ask him is just like, you know, is this, are we panicking? Is it like 10 out of 10 panic meter or is this kind of something that can happen when a guy's working his way back from Tommy John? Um, yeah. I, I don't really know what to do with, with those guys. Like, again, this is, a very, very fluid point in the calendar for Severino, Syndergaard, Chris Sale, uh, Zach Gallen. Um, you know, I, I bumped like Zach Plesak down like 15 spots to, to like 102. Um, like Dust, Dustin May, I kept inside, like, and this is all without adding in the prospects yet, but Dustin May is just inside my top 120 because I think if he – comes back comes all the way back from Tommy John then I think he's he could establish himself pretty quickly as like a top 20 pitcher for dynasty leagues but he's obviously you're going to miss um, most of next year with Dustin May so he's a tough guy to rank too yeah Syndergaard left the low a St. Lucie start yesterday with right elbow soreness which they say is precautionary but and I know there's a you know, new ownership there but it's still the Mets and I don't really look into or take precautionary at its – I don't take them at their word is what I'm trying to say. Um, I definitely do not. By the way, I wanted to thank uh, Marty for his kind words about the show, and he wanted to know if we're starting Manoa tonight, and we talked about him at the top of the show. Just wanted to uh, – you know, since he m commented here, wanted to address Marty and just say, I am starting Manoa in head-to-head. -head. That is a points league, though. I would start him in stake league if I could have that decision back. Uh, that's a I'm six starting in mix league. I'm starting him in our twelve team auto new league with uh, oh, right with an innings innings, innings cap. So that's right. Uh, partly now part part of why maybe I'm starting him there is just because I want to have one little piece of the action um, since the other leagues I have him in are weekly leagues and I didn't start him so. Uh, I I might just be starting like if I had him a bunch of other places maybe I wouldn't start him in auto new with the innings cap but uh, unless you're in unless you're in like a really shallow roto league where you're really trying to protect everything I, mean, I don't think you got I mean I think I think you start him I mean this is this is the whole point of rostering him in the first place yeah I think there's like a there's like 11 to 13 K upside. I'd say, I mean, I think he's that good and he's done that before and against big league hitters in spring games. So um, I think it could be a big one. You don't want to miss out if you, if you have the opportunity to plug him in. You mentioned Plesak. I don't have any inside knowledge about this injury, but I, I have to feel this is a gaming injury. <laughs> <laughs> and we saw with, who was it uh, on the A's? Jesus Lazardo had a gaming injury, <laughs> and I, yeah, you know, they say that they say that police had just ripped his shirt off or took it off too aggressively. I imagine that was in celebration of like a, a Mario Kart win or something like this. Yeah, I think this is this is something to be on the lookout for. Is these this uptick in gaming injuries that we're seeing <laughs> among? We are in an era of gaming injuries. It's kind of wild. <laughs> Um, who was it? David Price, too. He's like an OG gamer. I remember he had like carpal tunnel or something <laughs> for tough. some reason. They're gonna have but to I, start writing this into these players' contracts if they're not allowed to game. No, we're in the era of gaming injuries, and <laughs> it's absolutely wild. I, uh, I know that J Ram is a big, I've heard anyway that he's a big Mario Kart guy, so I'm I just have it in my head that. Maybe police act somehow beat J Ram and Mario Kart, got excited and tore his shirt off. 
and hurt his thumb. But that uh, is brutal injury because I thought he was starting to really look good uh, in a couple starts before. Uh, you know, I know his one right before he got hurt was not too good, but I thought he was starting to, to round into form. Uh, Joe Adele down at 114 looked so far away from putting it together last year, but he's been on at AAA and I kind of was on Brandon Marsh, but I think Brandon or uh, Joe Brandon Marsh was who I was on. But Joe Adele, I would think, has got to be getting close to a call up. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think. You, you, there's only so long you can just go out there and homer in almost every game before they give him a taste. But right. I don't, you know, again, he, he's kind of hurt by this being an OBP set of rankings. Uh, I just, it's, if his strikeout rate was like 24%, I'd be pretty bullish on him in his next chance in the majors. But, you know, I I don't I don't think that's what you want to see. And in fact, his strikeout rate's even higher than it was at AAA in 2019 before he got the call that year. And then he went on to strike out 42 percent of the time in the majors. So I you know I I think there's this is an okay window right now. I think to cast Joe Adele out. But then I think there's going to be another window to buy pretty low after he gets back to the majors because I, I just – I think it's more likely than not that he struggles again. Yeah, the strikeout and walk rates down at AAA, really not impressive right now. 33.7% K rate, 7% walk rate. But, yeah, 10 homers already through 22 games – or I'm sorry, through 18 games. Age 22, 10 homers through 18 games. He also got a couple bags, 20 RBI. And you look at that team right now. Ugh, I mean, Jay up leading off and then just a slew of uh, just mediocre bats and washed up. Uh, I mean, it sounds mean to say, but just guys who have no real business being there. And if I know Perry Manassian was trying to throw some cold water on. Joe Adele saying he's making strides, but still not quite there. But uh, I have to think they give him a look pretty soon because it's, this team could be so far, so far down by the time Trout comes back. I mean, it, just... it might not even be a front office decision, too. You know, like yeah. Artie Moreno might just look at the standings and be like, "Well, why the hell That's is true. that guy with ten homers at AAA not up?" You know. Yeah, you love a good owner who will step in like that. Go down the, <laughs> on the hair. Uh, we need more of that. Uh, but James, Dustin May down on the list. Uh, so many injuries in the game right now. Uh, Jake Cronenworth's been just fantastic. He's what? up at 125. I wanted to ask you about the guy right ahead of him, Chris Taylor, who's on the main event squad. Uh, Chris oh, Taylor that. is – I, yeah, Chris Taylor's top 20 in earned auction dollars so far this year in OBP leagues, and he's 30 years old. He's a free agent after the year. I mean, where where would you have him ranked for for OBP? Because, like, I, I could see the case for having him even higher. I thought I was pretty bullish on him heading into the year, but, I mean, he's been better than, than even I thought he'd be. Yeah, he's a really tough guy because my instinct at first is a little lower than he should be than he is here. But that's maybe because of, you know where he was in draft season. I thought he was a value around like two hundred. Um, but I just you know maybe he leaves the Dodgers. He's he's got to be over thirty now, right? He's what thirty? I think he's thirty. Something? He's thirty exactly. I think. Oh, is he okay? Well, maybe he leaves you... the Dodgers and it's just kind of eh. Again. Would it even be bad if he left the Dodgers, though? Maybe not. Maybe not. But they just have such a good – they just develop guys so well. And uh, Remember, he fizzled out with Seattle. and I just yeah. kind of have a little bit of a worry that maybe maybe he'd leave and he'd just kind of be a guy. But, yeah, so far he's been just great and running, too. He's already exceeded his, his uh, stolen base total from last year and – yeah, I mean, he could be a 20, 25, 10 guy pretty easily. I, we kind of 
we kind of skimmed past him, but um, I did want to note that I've got Trevor Rogers right now at 73, oh, uh, wow. right in front of Jesse Winker and right in front of Joe Musgrove and Kevin Gaussman should end right in front of Luis Castillo. How does, how does that, that run of like Darvish 71, Teoscar 72 on down through uh, Key Brian Hayes at, at 80? How does that run strike you? Is that I think it looks right? pretty good. I mean, I think so. I maybe would like, like a guy like Springer, I'm kind of down on right now, but maybe I'd lower him below the, a lot in this group, but that all looks about right. I mean, the wink, man, I'm buying into. I was wrong. I was, I'm late to the party. Let's say that. And I, as a Reds fan, I shouldn't be, I guess I have to turn in my Reds fan card. Uh, Cause I fell asleep during the rain delay of Wade Miley's no, no. Then I didn't draft Jesse Winker on a single one of my 17 teams. But now I'm like back in, man. He just looks so locked in and just steady that maybe I'd bump him up a little bit. But I think that in terms of the ordering here, Rogers, Musgrove, Gaussman, uh, Castillo behind those guys. I'd say that's right. Castillo really, really hard right now. I, oh, yeah. I mean, I think this is about right. But yeah, I could see 50 spots in either direction. Uh, you know, a month from now, you ranking him. Any, mm. Anywhere in that range. Uh, but, dude, Winker and Rodgers I want to fully buy into. I, I didn't think he looked great the other night I was watching him because the Reds were off. I think – who was he facing the other night? Uh, Phillies maybe? Yeah, I think that was maybe his worst start of the year. Yeah, I didn't think he looked that great. His command was a little off. But, I mean, this guy is fantastic. And, uh, I mean – they have a lot of good arms there, but do you think Rodgers is like a number two in the big leagues from, from now on? Like, is he a number two big league starter? Well, yeah, I mean, I've got Sandy and Pablo Lopez ahead of him, uh, more so just based on track record. Uh, but, I, I mean, I think on a lot of teams he'd be the number two. Uh it's it's so tough, man. Like his his command is kind of the the swing skill for him. Um, it's also kind of a meaningless label. I just yeah. You know, I just it's kind of interesting, like because you were beating to the drum, but I think a lot of people were like, I um, mean, you know, looked at him as a number five when he could be just as good as really any of those arms. Do you do you agree in having? That, that group of Julio Arias, Ian Anderson, and Pablo Lopez up about 10 spots ahead of the Rogers musgrove gaussman trio, or should those guys all be kind of right next to each other? Hmm, good question. I'd say Arias kind of deserves to be up a little bit. Maybe not Anderson, although he's been really good. and uh, I feel like Pablo Lopez – I only have him on like one team, but he is fantastic too. Maybe he'd I'd bring down to the pack a little bit. Uh, maybe I'm would also have, just not appreciating him as much. Would as you I'm have Urias sure. even high? Like, who would you rather have in dynasty context neutral? Uh, Clayton Kershaw or Julio Urias? I think Urias personally, but it's close. I mean, Kershaw's still great. But Arias just looks like so steady. He's just always efficient. He just looks so polished for how old he is. I I've got Andrews. the same reservations with him as I do Corbin Burns. Like I, from a just a pure how has he looked so far standpoint. True. She should be higher, and maybe he should even be higher right now. Like, but I. And it does seem – I am encouraged that it does seem like the Dodgers are really going to push them this year from a workload standpoint unless unless for some reason they have a plan of shutting him down or moving him to the bullpen later in the year. But, if I mean, if he stays on this current pace, he's going to blow past his career high in innings. It's just a matter of how effective do, do Corbin Burns and Julio Arias look when they're like 20, 30, 40 innings past their previous career high in the majors. 
Yeah, that'll be interesting to see. And Arias was in the bullpen down the stretch, and it wasn't even for sure that he was going to be in the bullpen to start this season. But he was just he just kind of wrestled that job away. And um, yeah, I'm pretty high on him. But yeah, we just that is a qu- definite question mark in terms of how how well he can hold up. And if he's can still pitch at this level, when the innings start to add up, that's a good point. Tony Gonsolin, his rotation mate, you have at 141. Uh, I'm excited to get him back in a few of those draft and holds, and it looks like you have high hopes for him uh, coming back, you know, in, in the rest of his career. You expect good things from Tony Gonsolin. Yeah, I think uh, I was kind of late to the party on Gonsolin, and – the party hasn't even really happened because of that injury, but uh, last you know, year was kind of the party, though, in a sense. Sure, sure. I mean, it's hard to. I I guess I was sort of not willing to accept that that was. All <laughs> didn't want to come to the party. I didn't. Want, I declined the invitation to the party last year. <laughs> uh, but you know, you know, was you know, really talked me into him, and I. I mean, I think. You know, it's hard to bet against the Dodgers developing a guy, especially when the yeah. advanced metrics kind of back up that his his stuff is that good. So uh, I think, you know, it's it's always dicey to try to trade for a, an injured pitcher, but I think Gonsolin is a is a guy that I would be sniffing around on, especially if I was maybe not in full on contention mode this year. Yeah, I like that too, especially because he's been hurt, and it might not kill you to, in terms of acquisition. And you, costs. you'll still, you'll still have to, you'll have to pay for him. But I think that you but, might find a, his manager willing to kind of cash him out. Uh, it's kind of like a safe move rather than uh, just hold firm at at full price on him. Aaron Savali, another young arm at 156, so a little lower, but he's been really good so far, getting a lot of wins, which has been great. Uh, and then Kenta Maeda, 162. I think, you know, Dynasty ranks, he would have been a lot lower coming in, and then this reflects, I think this ranking does, uh, reflects a lot of concern about him, which is warranted. Uh, I, I was on Maeda, you know, as a third, fourth, fifth rounder, and it's been a huge bust. Uh, Got to worry about the arm too. I just don't know exactly what's wrong, but the breaking stuff hasn't been there. Yeah, no, I mean it's, and then you look at age, you look at uh, track record of innings with Maeda. I mean, last year was probably more so than any pitcher in the game. Last year's sprint was perfectly set up for Kenta Maeda, and this year it's been a different story. I also think, like, Blake Snell I have at 161. I don't know what the hell to do with him because he's just – he's not a five-inning pitcher anymore. Like, I I don't know what to make of that. Like, it, he just – it's – you're you're extremely fortunate if he goes deep enough to qualify for a win and pitches well enough to get the win. And so is that something that's going to change, like, at any point going forward? Is this just who he is? Like, I, I don't know what to do with Blake Snell either. Yeah, really tough guy to figure out. We're kind of going long. We still have our hip hop uh, walk up song draft to do. But anybody else you want to to mention? Maybe we could get a, to a few of these guys another week. But uh, and I know you'll be talking with Ian Khan yeah, uh, next week. But anybody yeah. else you want to mention this week? No, we can save it for like. Well, actually, uh, yeah, really quick. Uh, so one twenty seven, one twenty eight, one twenty nine. I have John Means, Carlos Rodon, Freddie Peralta. What do you make of that trio? And I Means is a guy. Another guy I just was dead wrong on. Rodon was completely hurt forever, and then bet on himself. Good for him. I think I'd take Peralta, but actually, I think I'd take Rodon. Peralta means, but I that's a really tough, tough one, man. Maybe it's, this maybe what this means is that uh, Freddie Peralta is our next no hitter. Oh, uh, yeah. That's with a good those point. guys being right in a row. That's um, a good point. I uh <laughs> you know, means 
I guess I just have to circle back to him and really dive in because I feel like I'm maybe I'm holding on to that past dislike of him as a fantasy option, you know, because of the division. And I just didn't think he had it, had it in him to navigate that division as well as he has. But I guess I have to begrudgingly accept that John Means is just a lot better than I realized. But yeah, I still you, think you, he's probably in that bunch. I mean, another thing to consider with Means is that, like, this is the worst his defense and run support's ever going to be. It's true. He's like, 28, though. But, yeah. I mean, that's still a not great, old. Still not I old. love that. It, that's like a prime pitcher age for me. Like, I – Yeah. I – We've talked about this before, like, and, and Brett Sayer uh, mentions this a lot. I mean, like, I I think age is often way too overvalued in dynasty rankings for pitchers. Um, and 28, you know, 28, 29, 30, like, that's that's right when you're kind of entering your prime as a as a pitcher in most most cases, most cases, at least for starters. Yeah, that's a good thing to point out because I do kind of have it in my head that the, that's getting up there. But the the aging curve for hitters and pitchers is quite a bit different now. I'd say. Oh, actually, the, and and to to that point, one the guy who honestly surprised me the most. It, maybe you can guess this, but so there's this pitcher in the NL East who's having an amazing year, who has been around a while. I think he's thirty. Who I Eflin? Had, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> I, I had zero zero shares of and I had no idea he was pitching this well because I just had no reason to be looking at it. But um do you have any do you have any guesses on this? This was by far the most surprising like when I because you know, I was checking up on everybody and yeah when I got to this guy's page, I was just like, geez, what's wrong with me? Like I could have gotten in on this guy. You said NL East? Yeah. Oh, Stroman? Zach Wheeler. Oh, okay. Yeah, Zach Wheeler's been great. Stroman's been really good, too. But this is a career I was not on Zach Wheeler, Wheeler either. I was yeah, not I, on him either. And he's, and he's basically fastball slider, and it's working yeah. for him. Yeah, I didn't um, realize how good he'd been. A 2 3 8 ERA, 0 9 4 whip. Oh. Yeah, so I, that, that was a free, that was a free, like, Top Square, twenty starter. Yeah. At, I don't. I forget where he was going in drafts, but I mean, you could get him as like your SP four. So I, yeah. I whipped on that one. Yeah, I feel like I'm in striking distance in a lot of my leagues, but then yeah, I look around. I'm like, how did I? I don't know. This game will humble you, but that's what's part of what's so great about it is, uh, you know, we we study for six months. And more than that, it's kind of just like a lifestyle. <laughs> it just becomes your life. Uh, you still get some some guys wrong. You overlook them, and you just try to turn over as many stones as you can. But, James, let's uh, get to our walk-up song draft. I forget if I'm first or you're first this week. I think you're first. All right. Well, I mentioned that I didn't have a song, but I, I'm going to play this. Uh, I'm not going to play it so that we don't get, you know, bumped off YouTube or anything, but I, uh, a song that I played for you and John McKechnie and our buddy Kevin O'Brien when we were doing the Stake League draft, uh, Afu Ra. Have you heard of Afu Ra, James? Because he's no. an old school guy. I have to look up what the actual name of the song is here real quick, but it's uh, Equality. So it's from the album Body of the Life Force, which has this weird, like, animated, it's kind of like a computer animated cover. Uh, not animated, but this weird computer animation picture. Is uh, That's the only is album Andrew, I ever heard of from Afu Ra. Is Andrew Redding going to be able to find this one? Probably not. <laughs> Low probability. But no, maybe, because... How I do think, you spell it? A F U dash R A, and the song is called yep. Equality. Yeah, it's it's on there. It's on great, there. Great. Andrews in Luck. Great song. Now, if I remember right, there's a little bit of talking at the beginning, which for a walk up song isn't great. But if you know, if ideally the person handling the walk up music could just. 
fast forward or have it start at the beginning of the actual song uh, because the beat's kind of iconic if you've if you've heard of it if you've heard it before so give me afu ra equality great song all right i'm gonna go uh jay-z snoopy track uh timbaland beat okay it's gonna get me hype in the box some timbo um, yeah juvenile on the hook Ooh, i didn't Maybe I need to circle back to this song. I like it, James. Well, good stuff, man. I think this playlist is fleshing out pretty darn well. Uh, I got to – I mean, I, I'm happy with my choice this week, but I do uh, do need to come to that decision before we start the show uh, in future weeks. But uh, looking forward to talking again this Friday on Farm Friday, James. Anything else you want to mention? Uh, no, this this was this was good. I will just be ranking players for the next four days if anyone needs me. Thanks for all the work you're putting in, man. I will play this outro. We are sponsored by WinBet, so we appreciate them. We'll talk to you soon on the RotoWire Prospect Podcast. Try RotoWire today, free for ten days. Get our premium tools, rankings, analysis, and breaking news alerts. No credit card required. Go to rotowire.com forward slash try.